All right, uh, it is time for the dailies. Let's take a look at what's happening on Daily Trust. Uh, the major headline here in the, on the front page of the newspaper here states, Outrage, agony as death toll hits 20, many still trapped. And this has to do with the Ikoi building collapse. And uh, we have a writer here that says, Another two-story caves in. Lawyers to sue government six compensation for victims' families. Experts blame Lagos for negligence. And how I escaped from collapsed building. And this is um, a word of mouth from the, a laborer who actually worked uh, there on the building. All right. Uh, we actually have another one here, a uh, story here that says NNPC dismisses fuel scarcity fears. Says 1.7 billion liters in store uh moving on to uh page four uh apc baron party says lami o and he says we've given birth to triplets uh says ruling party all right so we'll move on to another uh story here still from the front page of daily trust newspaper families narrate ordeals as kidnappers abduct two professors others at university of abuja moving on at the on the footnote we have anambra governorship apc apga pdp others sign peace pact today uh if you check at if you check page six you would find another story here that says kano goes digital as nbc launches a digital switch over and on page four we have a story here Nigeria needs 615 trillion naira to bridge infrastructure gap in 10 years, says Buhari. Okay, let's take a look at some of the stories. Um, the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, the Punch is leading with the story. APC convention date shaky. Party battles crisis in 13 states. Uh, and the riders, Kwara, Rivers, Oshun, Abia factions, others wait verdicts on Congresses. Uh, another rider is saying APC won't give this new car to a careless driver who will crash it. That's according to General Secretary. That, that sounds quite. <laughs> uh, we won't withdraw court cases challenging Congresses, vow party members. Uh, and you'd also find on the Punch newspaper this morning on page 19, NMPC admits hitches as depots dismisses price hike rumor. Uh, and on page 4 and page 5 on the Punch newspaper, Ikoi building, Lagos suspends general manager, debt toll rises to 20 as families protest. Uh, you'd also find on the Punch newspaper, inadequate troops may delay 740 megawatts Zungiru Kashimbila project's inauguration. Uh, you'd also find a pictorial there of the 21-story building that crashed in Lagos uh, with some security operatives as well uh, on that site as well. And on page... 30 of the punch newspaper you'd find orderly Sa supreme court tampoons masterminds of raids says attack despicable shameful uh, you'd also see amoti kun arrest habilist accomplice with coffin hosting dis dismembered corpse uh, quite sad indeed uh, you get details of that story on the punch newspaper uh, and on, still on the Punch newspaper, on page 3, you'd see Asu Six Prayers as gunmen kidnap two Unibuja professors and family members. Um, we've seen, you know, how victims, uh, some victims' children have actually narrated what really happened uh, yesterday. And you get details of that on the Punch newspaper. So these are some of the stories on the Punch this morning. All right, we'll move on to the Nation newspaper. Fear of another herders attack grieves Ibarapa and you'll find that on page 25 of the nation newspaper a writer here says police get a large letter uh, moving on to the next story on page 30 you'd find a story here that says Buhari six release of 100 billion dollar climate change fund 
And on page five, you find two stories here. Manhunt begins for abductors of six at Uni Abuja. And then woman throws two daughters into well. That's uh, quite a sad one. And on page 25, uh, you'd find Anambra 2021. Candidates beg IPOP to sheath swords. Uh, you find another writer here. Police announce 48-hour lockdown. And uh, can other groups pray for peaceful poll? Moving on to page 28. Uh, police arrest suspects in siege to Odile's home. Still on uh, the Nation newspaper, on page 4, uh, $8.99 billion investment inflow tracked in third quarter. And a writer here says, Lagos, Rivers, or you're ahead of others. And uh, uh, the final story written in bold uh, from the front page of the Nation newspaper says, Victims' relatives besiege collapsed Lagos building site. And the writers here says uh, death toll now 21. Sangwo Lu suspends official promises transparent probe. Uh, these are the stories we have on the nation uh, newspaper. Okay, let's take one more paper we, before we review some of the stories on the dailies this morning. Uh, the Guardian uh, is saying enough is enough. Supreme Court warns on invasion of Justice Odili's house. And on page 5 of the Guardian newspaper, you'd find tension in Uni Abuja as gunmen abduct four dons, two kids. Uh, and on page 7 of the Guardian newspaper, demilitarize southeast, embrace dialogue, Igbo elders tell federal government. Uh, and on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper, you'd see lamentations as death toll in Lagos collapsed building reaches 19. Nine rescued, 50 still trapped. And the Guardian newspaper is leading with Nigeria Air. Federal government disburses 6.25 billion on consultancy advisors. Uh, and a writer is saying budgets 14.7 billion in three years. Qatar, Turkish, Ethiopian airlines identified as technical partners. Another writer is saying stakeholders split over prospects and priority in pandemic twilight of Buhari's government. Uh, you'd also see Nigerians pay 5.7 trillion for darkness eight years after privatization. Uh, so these are some of the stories uh, on the Guardian newspaper this morning. And as we've earlier told you, we have Hamza Idris, general editor, Daily Trust, to review some of the stories on the papers this morning let's begin with the daily trust newspaper all right uh how about uh, this uh, story that says nnpc dismisses fuel scarcity fears says 1.7 billion liters in store uh there was a little bit of panic buying uh that was uh, two days ago uh what do you have to say on this it is the usual fear occasioned by uncertainty in the um, petroleum sector of course um, we've seen some improvements, especially after the passage of the uh, BI, yeah, yeah. yeah, which is good. Um, the group general manager spoke from Glasgow, mm. um, sequel to what happened um, two days ago when we witnessed, um, you know, traffic, long queues, and then slight increase in the price from 163 to 165 mm. in some places um, Nigeria they have every reason to, to fear because of the uncertainty as I said earlier uh, but um, most likely with the words coming from the GMD I think we will see uh, some um, improvements today but ultimately uh, the solution lies in the action that the federal government will take in terms of revitalizing the sector. Right. Yes, people are afraid because first we import what we consume. More than 90% of what we consume. We bring it from uh, you know, other countries, which is very sad uh, for a country like Nigeria, which has um, the commodity in abundance. We are one of the producers. 
the CAD process is, is very sad. Okay. So we hope the, the, the modular refineries, the non-water refineries, the uh, water refinery which is being uh, reactivated will soon be completed so that at last Nigerians will have this confidence that, look, every morning I will have access to petroleum. Okay. Now, many would say there, there's this issue of um, filling station hoarding fuel. Already, uh, like yesterday, on your way to the Kubwa, there is a filling station along the Kubwa Express where they're already closing down their filling station and saying there's no fuel, which most of us know that there is actually fuel. Is it that there's a communication bridge or there's a gap between, you know, the filling stations and the authorities involved? Is this speculation? Yes. Uh, they felt that the price will be increased and you can imagine if you have like uh, maybe 150,000 liters in, in your uh, reservoir and then suddenly uh, the, the price is increased. The initial speculation was that it would be increased by 9 naira. Mm -hmm. You can That's imagine what you will get. Mm. Yes, and typical of many Nigerians, they always want to take advantage mm. of the situation, yes, and that was, was why they hoarded it. They told um, buyers that they don't have the commodity, whereas they, they, they have it. Okay, let's talk about the story making rounds, you know, in uh, almost every newspaper. Uh, outrage about the Ikoi building collapse. Mm -hmm. Outrage, agony as death toll hits 20 many still trapped. Let's have your take on this particular The story. outrage is legitimate mm. because uh, we're talking about 36 hours now mm. and uh, the estimate was that over 50 people were in that building. Mm. And up till now, uh, of course, nine have been rescued alive, 20 confirmed dead, meaning you still have around 45% of the people beneath the rubbles. So if Nigerians are angry, if stakeholders are expressing grief and all that, it's legitimate. It means our response to emergencies is poor. Poor. Yeah, you don't see things like this. And in 16 years, from 2005, that you have 152 incidents like this in Lagos alone. Mm -hmm. Meaning, on the average, more than 10 every year. Something must be fundamentally wrong. You know, you, you mentioned in Lagos alone. It looks like we're, we're getting to see more of this happening in Lagos. And experts are blaming Lagos for negligence. It's a mega city. That is where things are happening. That is where properties have value. That is where investors, you know, channel their resources. So attention uh, must be there all the time. Now, this developer, uh, they said he has stakes in South Africa, in UK, and in the US. But I don't think if he had recorded one incident of this kind in any of these countries, meaning we are getting it right here. So serious investigation must be carried out to unravel the mystery mm. behind what happened. You know, they said they gave him approval to uh, construct a 15-story building. And then he ended up erecting 21-story building. And then the consultant, you know, they, 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 they raised fears mm. at the fourth floor. They said they had doubts on the integrity of the structural aspect. And then the Lagos government said they also asked the man to stop, but who gave him permission to continue mm -hmm. the construction? So the man that was um, uh, suspended, uh, I see him as a scapegoat. Because it is beyond him. The building is not being constructed, you know, in the sky or where. Mm -hmm. But is that even a solution? Suspended. Suspending him. Well, uh, probably it will pave way for investigation or to assuage the feelings of Nigerians. You know how we behave. Um, those who are supposed to act, they will go to bed. 
you don't be sleepy until when something terrible happens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, late at night yesterday, when our paper was about going to bed, we received a very long statement that um, the Urban Development Agency or whatever, that they have sealed over 150 buildings in Lagos. What is that? At this hour? We are talking about rescue operations and you are now saying mm. you have sealed, sealed buildings. some buildings because they are compromised. This is not the time to do that. You know, talking about rescue operations, some would say, what is NEMA doing? <laughs> they are doing their best. You have NEMA, you have Lassema. Um, on Monday, that is when the incident happened, um, what NEMA said was that they, are, they were collaborating with the Nigerian Air Force. And they were also collaborating with the Nigerian Army, you know, and other agencies to help in, uh, you know, removing the debris, probably to rescue some of the people. Well, this is 36 hours or more. What do you think is the reason for the slow pace, you know, in rescue efforts? We are not prepared. Hmm. Yes, because if, if we are prepared, we will see serious excavators, not right. caterpillars that right. we have there. Mm. And you see people manually mm. removing the debris. Mm. It is very sad. In Sena climbs, apart from having the requisite equipment, you will also have probably ventilators and all that that will supply, you know, oxygen to some of the victims, because the likelihood is that many of them will have been alive mm. before now. And if you provided them with oxygen and other, you know, uh, safety uh, kits, they might be alive up to the time when you will be able to evacuate the, the rebels and then bring them out alive. But we don't have all these things. We don't have all these things. And it is very sad. It is very sad. Mm. Terrible All right, uh, let's move on to uh, the kidnap that actually happened, you know, close to home, very close to home, despite, you know, all efforts, you know, to curtail insecurity in Nigeria. It's actually coming closer and closer, you know, to us. Um, what is your take on the kidnap and the security situation in Nigeria in general? My prayer is that the president will not be kidnapped. Mm. Yes, or oh, you... Because this is Abuja, um, the daredevil kidnappers had the audacity to storm the University of Abuja, which is more or less at the center of the country, to kidnap professors, some staff, and then children from their residence in the dead of the night. It is very sad this is happening in the capital. Of the country, and as you rightly said, it is now common uh, to have all these indiscretions in any part of the country. Nowhere is secure. Uh, is secure. I mean, mm. yeah, the NDA was you know, ransacked some time ago. So we just have to wake up. I we have a story in the paper where the chief executive of the NFI, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, which is domiciled in the Central Bank, um, predicting when these kidnappings and other violent crimes will end. He said April 2022. He also said they predicted the end of Boko Haram uh, last September. Of course, we have recorded some successes. Mm. Uh, in the fight against uh, insurgency, especially with the picking up uh, of um, Sheikho al baranawi and even the person who succeeded al, al baranawi But the major problem is that whenever we record successes, we relax. Mm. And this should not be the case. So. The incident at the University of Abuja is not an isolated case. It is very sad, and it is an indictment which uh, should be propped. Not only that, all other embarrassing um, attacks, embarrassing, um, uh, you know, abductions and all that. People should pay 
price for that. So would you would you describe this like uh, as a form of selective abduction? Because it looks they went straight to the University of Abuja and not any other place. Yes, this is what they are doing now. Because they realize that um, um, people who have what it takes to pay ransom. I don't know whether professors have money. Have <laughs> <laughs> In Nigeria. <laughs> yes. You see, people don't travel anyhow. Only the poor travel by road when it is absolutely <laughs> necessary. necessary. Yes. So kidnappers now tactically devise this method of selective abduction. They will just storm um, the residence of their target. You can see it's, it's not arbitrary, this one. Mm -hmm. They targeted the place yes. mm -hmm. and then they were well prepared and then they stormed. But this morning, I read it in social media and I pray it is true that uh, they have been rescued. We are yet to oh, confirm. Okay. Oh. Yes, I we are yet that to confirm is that they are at the police station in Abaji or somewhere uh, in the outskirts of Abuja. We pray it is true. Okay, uh, let's, to, uh, let's take a look at uh, another story, uh, which is more political in nature, actually. Uh, APC convention dates shaky, party battles crisis in 13 states. Uh, we're also seeing a rider saying APC won't give this new car to a careless driver who will crash it. What are your thoughts about that? Well, Nigeria is the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, APC is on the side <laughs> and PDP, PDP mm -hmm. you know, the biggest uh, rival, mm -hmm. the biggest opposition. They held their convention uh, last week, that is PDP. Mm -hmm. They have a new chairman, chairman. from the net central and uh, all eyes are now on the ruling party. Where will their chairman emerge? Yeah. So by the time they have the chairman, I will start thinking about which part of the country will produce the presidential candidate. You can see PDP, they, they took their own from North Central, meaning they can go northwards or <laughs> southwards to pick the presidential candidate. It's the cat and mouse game between the two parties, so no matter what happens, uh, APC must also hold the um, convention, because that is when they will have um, elected leaders who will now pilot it appears uh, ahead of the presidential election which will take place in 2023. So it's part of the politicking. You can see all of them kept extending mm -hmm. one event oh, yeah. or the other in order to see what the other contender will do. It's part of the ball game mm. which is very interesting. Right. Yes, but uh, what we um, always say is that while they are doing the um, politicking, they should endeavor to continue to take care of Nigerians. Right. In our paper, we had an interview uh, with uh, Sule Lamido, a chieftain of uh, the PDP, mm -hmm. who was also a governor of Jigao. Yesterday, he described APC as a barren party. That it, it, it will not consume. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new PDP chairman is saying um, they are going to build consensus to defeat PDP in 2020. Uh, sorry, APC in 2023. Do you see that happening? Uh, very likely, <laughs> because that was what happened in 2015. You know, when a section of the PDP, the CPC, APGA, and other, you know, uh, banana parties. Coalesce into right, the banana, banana. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when they defeated the, the, the PDP. Most likely, you see these politicians, they have a way of burying their differences when they have a common enemy. Mm -hmm. You will see them fighting mm. fearlessly. But when it comes to taking decision, overnight, you will see them speaking with one voice and a dark horse will appear mm -hmm. and then you see them making waves.
Great. <laughs> we hope to see, you know, great things happen in 2023. Yes, definitely. All right. So let's move on to the whole issue about uh, Odile and the raid on her in her on her residence. And uh, the Supreme Court, um, according to Punch newspaper, the Supreme Court lampooned masterminds of the raid, saying the attack is despicable and shameful. You see, justices are honorable. And that is why you rarely hear them talking, granting interviews, and then visiting places. Justices, especially at the highest level, you don't see them in social gatherings, mm -hmm. you don't see them in markets, you don't see them attending naming ceremonies and all that. But look at how they, they spoke with one voice. But they said it is like the desecration of an arm of government. Mm. Yes. Um, and they want action to be taken um, because um, there is this comradeship among them that an injury to one of them is an injury, injury, to, to, all. injury to all of mm. them. Yeah. And uh, the siege on the residence of the, the Honorable Justice Orderly, honestly, is not really good for our democracy and it's not also good for the integrity of Nigeria. Somebody must have sanctioned it. Up to now we are unable to arrive mm -hmm. who is belong, uh, who sanctioned that action. But you can see the police have spoken, uh, the office of the Attorney General you know, also spoke, many people, civil society organizations. But somebody should tell the truth. Those who stormed the place they didn't do it at their own volition. Somebody must have asked them to go and uh, ransack the house. And they've been arrested for it. So uh, let us know their names. Because... Which you've not, they are not heard? Dumb. Yeah. They know who asked them to go. They didn't go there on, on their own. So it's good to know who really asked them to, to go and ransack that house. Because it's really sad for a country like Nigeria to descend so low. Well, well some say um, this move is not just aimed at, you know, uh, justice orderly, but a move against Nigeria's justice system. Do you see this as It's that true, because well? it's the justice of the Supreme Court, and that is the highest. You know, in Hausa they said, quote uh, Allah is a meaning that if you go there to seek redress, whatever happens, that's it. just relax, maybe <laughs> when you go to heaven, that is where you get another uh, verdict. So it is very sad. Yeah, and it's, the, it's a discretion of the justice system. Yeah, if it were a magistrate or something like that, but even at that level. <laughs> We shouldn't descend so low to to attack, you know, the the system, or probably to scare, you know, or to curry favor. I don't know. It's really sad because you 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 can't just understand how, you know, some operatives will just go to you know place like that and then start asking questions and ransacking. Mm. It's really sad. What is the motivation? Right. What do they want to achieve? Is yeah. it to scare her? Is she handling a certain case? Mm -hmm. Or is it to now, by extension, scare other justices of the Supreme Court? By the time we bring down this hallowed chamber, honestly, we will find it very difficult to stand as a country. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think let's talk about power. There's mm. this story on the Guardian newspaper. It says Nigerians pay 5.7 trillion for darkness eight years after privatization. Maybe we are on generator right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I saw a story that Zungeru and another power plant would be completed by December. Mm. And then just yesterday, um, we also carried a report where the uh, Nigeria bulk LNG city boss said no certainty as to when mm. electricity will be stable mm. so people are just talking anyhow um, but it's it's really sad because Nigeria has the potential 
to feed itself with electricity and uh, to also feed our neighbors. But you can see uh, policy inconsistency, corruption, and, you know, and many other factors. They are basically responsible. Because we have the hydro, we have the gas, we have the solar. Enough for us to be satisfied. Always, honestly, um, I always you know, feel embarrassed when we are talking about you know power yeah power and outages it's, 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 we don't we don't deserve to be in that platform but we are sadly yes, we are and um uh it says here that the writer here says that uh, the grid collapsed an average 130 times in eight years just the way we had 152 <laughs> <laughs> you know data journalism is very interesting it is yes and in nigeria Almost on every sector, you, you have this data. And they contextualize the sorry state. Mm. Because if you have this in, in eight years, it means almost every hour you have power outage in one area or the other. And this is uh, really sad. Yeah. Okay, we hope uh, something is done about it soon. All right, um, let's move on to uh, another story that's uh, talking about Nigeria Air. The federal government disbursed 6.25 billion naira on consultancy, says advisor. Let's have your take on this. Very sad also. Yeah. How I wish we have a positive story so that we can <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yes, but this is, the, this is where we are. Whenever I travel out of the country, especially... Um, Addis. I said, wow, you know, you see hundreds of aircraft. Addis Ababa is a crosswalk. Mm. Yes, you, you know, where you have um, many aircraft from all over the world, you know, landing and taking off. And that is the mainstay of the country mm -hmm. also. But here we are in Nigeria. We can't afford to. We are still at the consultancy level. Level and look at how it is also guzzling billions. And then today they will say we are going to partner with Eric. Tomorrow we are going to do this. Next tomorrow is another story. It is just bringing out the rot in the system. Uh, but we have to be serious, honestly. Uh, a country like Nigeria should have its own flagship because aviation. It's, it's really um, important in the uh, economic diversification of any country. We allow the Nigerian Airways to die. Uh, many people who were born in the last 30 years never heard of it. Mm. Yes, it was grounded. And um, during its you know, uh, prime days, it was one of the best airlines around the world. But it's completely gone now. Uh, many countries are making fortune, and Nigeria, with our GDP, the size of our population, enough for us to galvanize forces using the aviation this day. Let me give you an example. In 2019, I wanted to, to attend a conference in Niamey, that is Niger, mm -hmm. which is one and a half hours mm -hmm. if you are going straight from Abuja. But do you know how many hours it took me? Twelve. Mm. Yes, because from here I had to go to Ghana. What? Yes, from, yes wow. from Ghana I went to Benin. Yes, and then from Benin to Niger. Uh, yes, to Niger. And the journey started at 7 a.m. and it ended at 7 p.m. It must be quite exhausting. Yes, and this is something that should ordinarily, you know, take you um, two hours at most. Mm. Yes, but it took 12 hours. And you can imagine if we have um, our national carrier, you know, all the countries, you know, they will be coming here mm. and it will provide job opportunities right, yes. for Nigerians, you know, Qatarans, you know, oil marketers, mm. you know, businessmen. It's a huge, um, you know, corridor 
that Nigeria uh, can explore. And then even the tourism aspect of it. Aviation is a serious yes. sector. So uh, we should take it, not lightly, we should take it very serious to get it right. Because we have the market. And it will help. We will stop borrowing, I'm telling you. Mm. If we have <laughs> actually say that uh, you know the insecurity has to be fixed before you know you think of you have like insecurity that. in the US you also have it in Addis Ababa you have it in Istanbul I'm talking about serious countries where they they, they take the aviation uh, sector but the bottom line is that you have to provide jobs to address insecurity mm. even if we kill all the terrorists now all the bandits, <laughs> all the kidnappers, mm. we will give birth to more right. tomorrow unless we divert their attention from thinking about crimes and criminality to thinking about business ideas. Mm. So while we are tackling insecurity, look at how we are investing. Every year, we, we budget more than one trillion for, for insecurity. But how much do we budget for economic diversification? So we have to tackle the two simultaneously right. so that at the end of the day the the positive one will overwhelm the negative one so that people will be thinking positively mm. yes. well thank you so okay. much for coming on the show we've been speaking to hamza idris general editor daily trust we hope to have you next time thank Inshallah. you so much <laughs>